Anthony, in his lecture, has, I think, very rightly described Knox's work as um, an English version of Art Nouveau. Um, but what I'm trying to explain here is why, at the time, there was very much an aversion to actually getting too closely associated with um, um, uh, this term and what was happening on the continent. And um, that has possibly um, been one of the problems of uh, Knox's reputation and not really being sort of rightly identified as a part of the European mainstream, when in fact, actually, I think we can sort of arguably say um, nowadays that he, that he was. There are certain distinct sort of elements of Art Nouveau influence in uh, some of the best of his designs, certainly in the early 1900s, following the 1900 Paris exhibition. Now, whether in fact Knox himself was uh, aware of being influenced by what uh, was happening in Paris and so on is unrecorded, and this is one of the difficulties in sort of uh, un uh, Archibald Knox scholarship, of course. Um, given the fact, too, that he was, in fact, actually uh, relative to people like Ashby and certainly Frank Lloyd Wright, um, a, a very retiring personality. Uh, and um, uh, it is true that, in fact, actually, the, the um, designs rescued by his uh, pupil, Denise Wren, in 1912, were rescued from the waste paper bin. And they were destined for the bonfire. Uh, in fact, actually, the Vienna acquired something like 12 of those designs in 1912, a gift of Denise Wren, uh, um, and it was the only, p the only work of Archibald Knox that we actually acquired in his own lifetime. Um, the remainder of over 100 uh, came to the museum, uh, again, as a gift of Denise Wren in 1969. Um, and this, you might imagine, would help in actually identifying Knox's designs and so on. Now, the problem with these drawings and so on is that many of them are really fantastic uh, uh, works of art and so on, but they're all designs that were never put into production. <laughs> um, uh, so, you know, an easy sort of cross-reference and so on is actually denied us in that respect, too. So, um, uh, I just wanted to really add that and sort of um, perhaps excusing my own institution's reluctance to um, uh, pay in Knox any... Uh, particular attention at the time, but he wasn't the only one who was certainly left out. Uh, Christopher Dresser, we didn't acquire any of his pieces um, during his lifetime, despite Dresser being a close friend of Cunliffe and in fact the uh, second director uh, of, of the VNA. Um, and I can think of many others. Charles Robert Ashby, again, is another one. Um, the work of Frank Lloyd Wright, we've only just recently acquired. Uh, and of course, the problem now is, is that it is enormously expensive uh, and has now got well beyond our reach. Uh, but there was this brief window, if you like, um, with the, uh, um, really the interest of my predecessors, and I mentioned um, Shirley Berry, Barbara Morris, Elizabeth Aslin, uh, and those who also worked on the Liberty Exhibition in 1975, which included David Coachworth, uh, Madeleine Ginsberg for textiles, uh, Edmund Capon, um, who later became director of the Art Gallery of New South Wales, in Sydney, and uh, Robin Crichton, who uh, contributed to the uh, Far Eastern uh, aspect of uh, Liberty's <coughs> imports. Um, it was those people and so on that actually did focus um, on uh, the, if you like, the Edwardian and Victorian decorative arts, um, and made the push into resurrecting the museum's latent reputation for actually acquiring uh, contemporary uh, or near-contemporary art. I should uh, add that I um, have been in the VNA for actually a, 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 now a rather ridiculously long time to the extent that one of my cheeky younger son once asked me what was it like working for Sir Henry Cole. Um, that, uh, uh, but I do remember when I, I, I um, arrived in the museum in the mid-70s and so on that there was still a reluctance amongst um, many of the senior older and certainly more conservative um, members of the curatorial staff at the 19th and 20th centuries were something of an easy option and not really to be given the same degree of academic respectability that uh, earlier periods they thought merited. Uh, this is an attitude that now has been turned around. Um, uh, unfortunately, of course, it, it's also been uh, widely um, uh, respected elsewhere, so the market reflects those values and, and it is now really, as I have just said, rather beyond our reach, but it was if you like, a sort of a gap between the 60s and the 90s where it was possible to rectify these uh, uh, mistakes. And um, for that reason, we do actually have some certain representation of Archibald Knox uh, in our collections. 
uh, which is very gratifying. I think I've probably spoken for long enough. But anyway. <laughs>